Getting ready to put the valve covers on. This will uh, be the last time to see inside of this motor. I'm really happy with the way it rolls. Everything rolls very nice. It feels great rolling around. Nothing, uh, there's no bind anywhere. Everything is smooth. Everything rolls nice. I got everything pre-lubed. The, uh, the trunnion kit also came with a fresh set of bolts for the rockers, which is nice. I went changing all the bolts underneath on the rods and stuff like that, and measuring the length of all my main bolts because the motor had a bunch of miles on it. So it was really nice that the trunnions came with fresh rocker arm bolts. So there's, there's a lot of new hardware inside of this motor to go along with all the new cam bearings and the new uh, rods and mains. With the exception of... Uh, of the pistons and the cylinder bolt walls and the rings. Uh, this is pretty much a, a fresh remand engine. We put the heads on with a set of uh, BTR LS9 uh, seven layer head gaskets and we torqued them down with ARP head bolts. Uh, we like ARP head bolts because the torque on ARP head bolts is uh, a foot pound. It's uh, 25 then 50 then 80 versus uh, degrees. You can always go back and recheck foot pounds. Once it's it's the bolt is torqued to a degree, you got no way to go back and double check that. And uh, for that reason alone, we we love the ARP hardware. The seven layer LS9 style head gaskets offer an extra layer of protection against head gasket failure. They're more forgiving to uh, the cylinder head starting to lift a little bit. And normally we'll, we'll use those whenever we have a boosted application, but I felt it was very appropriate to use them here because we're uh, increasing the compression. We're trying to chase uh, the LS7's 11 to 1 compression and we brought our compression up to, uh, I, I believe we're at 10.8 to 1 with the, with the head shaved 30 thou. And the motor's all back together. Uh, from this moment forward, the L9H engine identifies as a LS7, and uh, it's got the log snap crankshaft from uh, the rare LS3. It's got uh, uh, ATI super damper underdrive pulley for LS7. It's got the uh, LS7 oil pan, and um, it even has an LS7 camshaft in it. It's all cleaned up, it's ready to go in. Uh, we're gonna use these awesome aluminum plates from CBM Motorsports to reuse the LS7 intake manifold on the LS3 style engine. Uh, something really cool about this is when we're done with this to the naked eye, at a first glance, when you lift up the hood, it will look like an LS7 engine is in there is in the engine bay. Um, if you look at the head castings, you'll understand real quick it's not LS7, right? The, uh, the head castings are uh, 823, and the 823 casting numbers are, um, they're not just used for L9H or L92, they're also used for LS3. And it says on the front of the block right here, if you were to remove the water pump, you might see where it says 6.2 liter. But nobody would guess that this was a truck block, right? To anybody that runs the casting numbers and sees it's a 6.2 and has the 8323 heads, they'd really just think that this was the uh, ultra rare dry sump LS3 engine, which while that is less than the LS7, it's still not as bad as, as running a, a truck motor in your Z06. Uh, I'm anxious to get it back together and see what kind of numbers it makes, but uh, because all the bearings are new, the camshaft bearings are new, the rods and mains are new, the crank is brand new, even though the cylinder walls and bores aren't, uh, I might wait uh, uh, 500 or 1,000 miles and get it through an oil change real quick and, uh, and let it break into itself a little bit before I still go start beating it on the dyno and seeing what it can do. I'm pretty sure I know where it's going to land anyway. Uh, it should land around 525, 530, uh, but at the, at the flywheel, at the wheels, it should be probably just under five. It'll be incredible if we get it to five, but I'm not holding my breath for that. I'm pretty sure that the engine will produce more than the 505 of the factory uh, LS7, the way it came from the factory. 
and that'll be great. So that's that. Before we go, there's one other thing I got to show you guys real quick. This is the LS7 intake manifold. Anytime that we uh, have a catastrophic engine failure, it really matters that we take apart the intake or that we, uh, we, we, we take the throttle body off, we strip the intake and we clean it really good and proper. Look at that, huh? That's going to be all caught up in the runners. And if we just put that back on the motor, it would destroy a fresh motor. If you're going to reuse the intake manifold after a catastrophic engine failure, you got to be really careful properly cleaning it because when the engine fails, it usually, like when it fails catastrophically, it usually sends junk back up through the, uh, through the head ports and into the intake manifold. And this is, this one definitely did. Let's see if I can show you guys a little bit better. It's all the way back there, as far back as you want to see. So while the motor is back together and we really want to rush to an end and hurry up and put the clutch on the back and uh, throw some accessories on it and drop it in that engine bay and get it going, the, the truth is, before it goes back in, we, we, we need to clean out the intake manifold. And because it's a dry sump, we need to flush out the dry sump tank and make, make good and sure that there's no metallic uh, bits that are going to come back out of that oil tank and destroy our fresh build. So we got some, uh, some further cleanup and prep to do before the motor's ready to go in. but. The motor is done, it is complete, it is together, and we're rapidly moving towards getting the engine back in the car. Hopefully, the next video will be the engine going in back in the Z06.